And thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm Don Ma. A few China-related stories to start off. China's biggest internet search engine provider, Baidu, on Tuesday beat third-quarter revenue estimates. And this was helped by stronger advertising income. Let's have a closer look. China's top search engine is doing better than expected, and that might be a good sign for the country's economy. Baidu said Tuesday that third quarter revenue came in at just over $4.7 billion. That was just ahead of analyst estimates. The company benefited as ad spending rose amid signs of a wider upturn. China's economy is set to expand 5.4% this year, according to forecasts from the International Monetary Fund this month. That's an increase on its earlier forecast, encouraging companies to spend more on marketing. Baidu also beat forecasts on profit. The company is among one of many in China engaged in a fierce war to win the local market for AI services. Boss Robin Lee said earlier this month that the country risked duplication of effort and a huge waste of resources as a result. He urged firms to focus on developing practical applications for the technology. Baidu's own bot, dubbed Ernie, was open to public use in August. An updated version was then unveiled last month. And McDonald's has struck a deal to wrap up its stake in its China business to just under 50 percent, expressing confidence in the burger chain's growth prospects in the world's second largest economy. Here are the details. McDonald's has got a taste for growth in China. The U.S. fast food giant says it has struck a deal to ramp up its stake in its Chinese business to 48 percent. The deal sees McDonald's buy out a 28 percent stake held by Carlyle Investment Group. The move is in sharp contrast to other multinational corporations. Many have pulled back investments in China or even left the market altogether due to geopolitical and economic worries. But McDonald's chief executive Chris Kemchinsky said Monday that he believed there was no better time to capture higher demand in what he called its fastest growing market. Financial terms were not disclosed, but two sources said the deal values the China unit at around $6 billion. That's far more than its valuation in 2017, when McDonald's agreed to sell 80% of the business for up to $2.1 billion. Since then, the number of McDonald's stores in China has doubled to 5,500, and the country has become its second largest market. It aims to have more than 10,000 stores there within the next few years. McDonald's further said the business has generated sales growth of more than 30% since September 2019. A consortium led by state-supported conglomerate Citic still has controlling ownership of the China business with a 52% stake. And chip designer NVIDIA said on Tuesday it expects a steep drop in fourth quarter sales in China, a key revenue generator for them in the wake of new U.S. rules, but forecast overall revenue above Wall Street targets. And this is, of course, as supply chain issues ease. Take a look. NVIDIA keeps beating Wall Street forecasts. The U.S. chipmaker has been one of the big winners from the AI boom. Its semiconductors dominate the market for the new artificial intelligence services. On Tuesday, the firm again lifted its outlook. NVIDIA now forecasts current quarter revenue of around $20 billion. That is well ahead of analyst forecasts. Revenue for the third quarter also came in around $2 billion higher than expected. U.S. controls on the export of cutting-edge chips to China are now the company's big worry. NVIDIA expects a steep drop in fourth-quarter sales to the country as a result. It has developed lower-powered chips that get around the restrictions. But industry experts say that takes away vital research resources, and the products could just end up on the banned list anyway. NVIDIA stock is up around 240% so far this year, but slipped a little in U.S. after-hours trade following the China warning. Tuesday also saw earnings from HP. The computer maker missed forecasts for the fourth quarter, but stuck to its annual earnings outlook. HP said it would launch AI-driven computers in the second half of next year. North Korea said it successfully placed its first spy satellite in orbit on Tuesday and vowed to launch more in the near future, defying international condemnation from the United States and its allies. Here's more. 
Japan's missile warning rang out in Okinawa late Tuesday after North Korea said it had launched a rocket carrying a satellite. Pyongyang claimed it placed its first spy satellite in orbit and vowed to launch more in the near future. Photos released by the North's state media appeared to show leader Kim Jong-un overseeing a fiery launch of a rocket. Reuters cannot independently verify the images. Hours later, Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida condemned the launch. He said at least one missile flew over Okinawa toward the Pacific Ocean and that the use of ballistic missile technology is a clear violation of UN resolutions against the North. Japan, South Korea and the U.S. could not confirm whether a satellite was in orbit. South Korea said it has now suspended part of a military agreement it signed with the North in 2018. Seoul's defense ministry said it would resume surveillance flights near the border. The North Korean regime is entirely responsible for the whole of this situation. And if North Korea makes any additional provocation, our military will immediately and vigorously punish North Korea based on the firm South Korea-U.S. joint defense posture. In a show of force, a U.S. submarine and an aircraft carrier arrived in South Korea. Analysts said the timing of this launch by the North is likely a tactical consideration as it tries to beat South Korea in succeeding in the military reconnaissance area. Here's Hong Min from the Korea Institute for National Unification. South Korea has been making significant preparations for launching a reconnaissance satellite by working on solid fuel space launches since last year. It appears that North Korea engaged in a competitive struggle with South Korea, a race for time, to showcase its operation of military reconnaissance satellites, possibly to avoid being preempted in the military reconnaissance area. Hong said he believed Russia provided some level of technical consultation for the North, but it may not have been a full-depth involvement in the design. And now just a quick recap of markets. U.S. stocks retreated on Tuesday as retailers declined after some disappointing outlooks and as technology shares fell. Here's a quick look. Wall Street's main indexes ended lower on Tuesday, with the S&P 500 and Nasdaq snapping five-session winning streaks after disappointing outlooks from retailers weighed on stocks. The Dow and S&P 500 each shed about two-tenths of a percent, while the Nasdaq shed six-tenths. Minutes from the latest Federal Reserve meeting showed officials taking a cautious approach on interest rates, saying they would raise them only if inflation did not continue to tick down. But Scott Ladner, chief investment officer at Horizon Investments, says the central bank should consider lowering rates as soon as April of 2024. When the Fed says higher for longer, they're talking about keeping rates at this, you know, these kind of five to five and a half percent levels for pretty much all of next year. Um, we think that is very un unlikely because, you know, we do see inflation coming down pretty quickly, uh, pretty predictably, frankly. And as inflation comes down, the Fed maintaining rates where they are is actually becoming more restrictive through time. This is not a Fed that needs to become more restrictive if they're winning on the inflation, uh, on the inflation battle and, and, they're, and they're seeing an economy which is starting to slow a little bit, which it is. In company news, shares of NVIDIA slipped from an all-time high on Tuesday and fell further in after-hours trading following the chipmaker's quarterly results. NVIDIA forecast quarterly revenue above Wall Street's estimates, but also warned that sales to China and the Middle East would slow due to export controls. In retail news, shares of Kohl's shed more than 8.5 percent after the department store chain missed third-quarter sales estimates, and Best Buy also dipped after flagging weakening consumer demand heading into the holiday season. Huge news in the crypto world. Binance chief Jiangping Zhao will step down and plead guilty to breaking criminal U.S. anti-money laundering laws as part of a $4 billion settlement. And this will resolve a years-long probe into the world's largest crypto exchange. This is according to prosecutors on Tuesday. Let's take a look at the report. The head of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange has reached a deal with U.S. federal prosecutors that will cost him his job and $50 million. 
Changpeng Zhao, the CEO of Binance, will also plead guilty to breaking U.S. anti-money laundering laws, and the firm he founded will pay a $4 billion penalty. That's according to prosecutors in court documents filed on Tuesday, and it's the latest devastating blow to the crypto world since the conviction earlier this year of FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried. Lawyers for Zhao and Binance, as well as a company spokesperson, did not respond to calls for comment. Reuters reported last year that Binance has been under scrutiny from the U.S. Department of Justice since at least 2018. Tuesday's plea deal also resolves civil charges filed in March by the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. The CFTC accused the crypto platform of failing to implement an effective anti-money laundering program to detect and prevent terrorist financing. The regulator wrote that in February 2019, Binance's former chief compliance officer received information on transactions by the militant Palestinian group Hamas. Zhao, a billionaire who was born in China and moved to Canada at the age of 12, said the CFTC's, quote, complaint appears to contain an incomplete recitation of facts, and we do not agree with the characterization of many of the issues alleged. And OpenAI on Wednesday said that it has reached an agreement for Sam Altman to return to OpenAI as CEO with a revised board that includes new faces, such as former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. Here's more. He was out, but not for long. Sam Altman is returning as chief executive of OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT. The move caps an astonishing few days of office intrigue. Altman was ousted from the AI startup on Friday, with the board saying he was guilty of communication failures. The move rocked the tech sector, with Altman widely seen as the face of the AI boom. It also came as a shock to investors, including major open AI backer Microsoft. The weekend then saw apparent efforts by executives to have Altman restored. Hundreds of OpenAI staff also threatened to quit unless he was brought back. But the board refused to budge, instead installing former Twitch chief Emmett Shear as interim CEO. Microsoft then said Altman would join it to run a new research unit. Now the AI pioneer says it will bring him back after all. In a post on X, Altman said he was looking forward to returning. At the same time, the OpenAI board will get a shake-up with new faces brought in. Among them is former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. Microsoft Chief Satya Nadella welcomed the changes, saying they put OpenAI on track for more stable and effective governance. Meanwhile, social media company X on Monday sued media watchdog group Media Matters, alleging the organization defamed the platform after it published a report that said ads for major brands had appeared to posts touting Hitler and the Nazi party. Here's the report. Social network X is suing watchdog group Media Matters over claims that ads for major brands appeared next to content touting Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. Elon Musk's firm says the report defamed it and was based on manipulation. In a Texas lawsuit, X says Media Matters resorted to endless scrolling and refreshing until it found ads next to extremist posts. The company says that misrepresented the typical user experience with the intention of harming X and its business. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has also opened a probe, saying he was extremely troubled by allegations that Media Matters manipulated data. We're at a really critical moment right now. In an emailed statement, Media Matters President Angelo Carusone called the lawsuit frivolous and said it was meant to bully X's critics into silence. The watchdog group is widely seen as liberal-leaning, and its allegations have added to the financial challenges for X. Major advertisers, including IBM and Comcast, have pulled marketing on the platform following the report. That comes after a previous exodus of advertisers following Musk's purchase last year of the network then known as Twitter. Reuters has previously reported that ad revenue at X has been down at least 55% on the year every month since the takeover. Many firms have been wary of Musk's contentious posts. 
Those concerns flared anew this week after the billionaire was accused of endorsing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory posted on X. And the U.S. government may need to rely on Elon Musk technology, and it seems like it may be hard for federal agencies to find a replacement for Musk tech. Here's more. And lift off. The Pentagon is getting in deeper with Elon Musk. Go Falcon Heavy, go Space Force. Giving Musk's private space company, SpaceX, a contract for up to $1.2 billion to send secretive spy satellites into space. But that's not all. The Pentagon is also investing up to $70 million in Starshield, a more secure version of SpaceX's massive constellation of Starlink satellites, which are vital to the Ukraine military's success against Russia on the battlefield. I can confirm that we do contract for Starlink for services in support of Ukraine. Uh, with the ultimate objective to be ensuring that Ukraine has the satellite communication infrastructure that it needs. And NASA couldn't send another astronaut to the moon without Elon Musk's company. <laughs> Musk Starship is the most powerful rocket ever built, and it launched on its second test flight on Saturday. NASA will spend about $4 billion on it because it will be the lunar lander of the space agency's flagship Artemis program. It's likely America's only chance to beat China to the moon in this second space race. Go Dragon, go Falcon. NASA's also reliant on SpaceX to launch astronauts to the International Space Station. For now, no other launch provider other than the Russian government can do it. SpaceX is on top because they have done the best. Doug Lavero is one of the few people who's been a top official at the two government agencies most dependent on Elon Musk's companies. And he describes NASA as being much more reliant on SpaceX than the Pentagon. SpaceX is predominant right now, but they're by no means the monopoly that we all will depend upon. While the U.S. does have other partners, SpaceX has been dependable in a dangerous business, which could explain why they continue to work with Musk, who the White House has condemned for spreading anti-Semitic messages. Last year, the United States conducted 78 successful launches, and SpaceX was responsible for 61 of them. That's the same number of launches as the Chinese government and nearly eight times the amount of SpaceX's closest U.S. competitor, the United Launch Alliance, a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. This year, SpaceX has already surpassed that record with 85 orbital launches and counting. For now, and for the near future, the U.S. government's access to space is overwhelmingly tied to SpaceX. And a White House spokesman said Monday that he's, quote, not aware of any efforts to change that. And retailers are preparing for what they hope will be yet another record-setting global shopping spree on Black Friday, which is this year on November 24th. Here's a preview of what to expect. Retailers are gearing up for Black Friday. The global event known for its deep discounts marks the unofficial start to the holiday shopping season. Tens of millions of people are expected to take part on November 24th. But this year, analysts say shoppers are struggling with tight budgets. Retailers in the U.S. and around the world will have to work harder to entice shoppers. Here's what to expect from Black Friday 2023. An estimated 132 million Americans will shop pre-holiday sales such as Black Friday and Cyber Monday this year, according to fintech firm Finder. That's down from last year's estimate of 140 million. One retail analytics firm predicts in-store traffic will drop by 3.5% compared to last year. Many may look online though. Adobe Analytics says spending there could go up nearly 6% to $9.6 billion. It says online purchases have more than tripled in the past decade. Holiday sales online and in U.S. stores are expected to rise up to 4% during November and December, according to the National Retail Federation. But that's the slowest pace in five years. And data from Deloitte suggests people will spend less time scouring. 5.8 weeks this year compared to a 7.4 week window before the global health crisis. So analysts say for retailers, promotions will be key. 
They're already touting early deals of up to 30% on some merchandise online and in stores. Think Best Buy, Macy's, H&M, as well as e-commerce retailers like Shein. They want to get a sense of shopper demand and avoid product shortages. MasterCard is predicting a 6% growth for electronics this year. Skin and hair care products are also expected to be popular. Meanwhile, shares of retailers ranging from Best Buy to American Eagle dropped on Tuesday after several popular consumer chains warned of slowing holiday sales from inflation-weary customers. Take a look. Shares of several major retailers tumbled on Tuesday thanks to tepid holiday forecasts from Best Buy, Kohl's and Lowe's. Just days ahead of the Black Friday shopping rush, Best Buy cut its annual comparable sales forecast, calling consumer demand, quote, difficult to predict. Shares of the consumer electronics chain, down nearly 15 percent this year, dipped further in Tuesday afternoon trading. Kohl's also lowered its annual sales forecast and said it would aggressively discount prices during the crucial holiday season, sending its shares down as much as 11 percent. And Lowe's on Tuesday projected a bigger drop in annual same-store sales than previously expected as inflation-weary consumers cut spending on home improvement projects, hitting the company's key do-it-yourself business segment. Shares dropped more than 2.5 percent. Bucking the trend of trimmed outlooks was Abercrombie & Fitch and American Eagle, with both forecasting holiday sales above analysts' expectations. But even they couldn't escape the sector's gravitational pull, with shares of Abercrombie sliding 3.5 percent and American Eagle nosediving more than 16 percent. The CEO of General Motors' robot taxi unit has resigned from the company a day after apologizing to staff as the company undergoes a safety review of its U.S. fleet. Here's more. The boss of General Motors' cruise unit has quit amid questions over the safety of its robot taxis. Kyle Vogt said he had resigned in an email to staff seen by Reuters on Sunday. His exit comes after an October crash that saw a cruise vehicle dragging along a pedestrian. In November, the California Department of Motor Vehicles ordered the firm to pull all its self-driving cars off state roads. It called cruise vehicles a risk to the public and said the company had misrepresented the safety of its technology. Cruise did not initially disclose all video footage of the accident, which also involved another vehicle. It says it has since shown the complete video to regulators and provided them with a copy. The company is now conducting a full safety review of its vehicles and says it needs to win back public trust. A day before his resignation, Vote had offered an apology. He said Saturday that he took responsibility for the company's plight. Vote said crews needed to double down on safety and transparency. Cruise competes with Alphabet's Waymo and has been testing driverless cars in several U.S. cities. The popularity of recent protests in New York City has attracted attention and the attention of people looking to make some extra cash as well. NTD Sharp Marshall looks into the business of protests. There are a lot of protests in New York City all year long. And for some, protests are a money-making opportunity. You'll find the American entrepreneurial spirit at a number of these events. Simply having a food truck in a lucky location can do the trick. Some say these entrepreneurs don't actually support the causes, but many don't seem to mind buying their products at these demonstrations. But not all events are beneficial to businesses. There have been demonstrations such as pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian events that have grown so large that they obstruct local business operations. I observed this giant event march through the city causing traffic congestion and blocking businesses. The march protest made multiple stops around the city at different companies, blocking Penn Station, Madison Square Garden, New York Post, Starbucks, Bank of America, and intersections. Stopping so many traffic intersections is possibly also hindering emergency response times. Penn Station recently had some entrances obstructed due to a recent giant pro-Palestine march 
And Grand Central Station has also had issues on recent multiple occasions due to ceasefire protesters and pro-Palestine protesters. With such large crowd gatherings, while some are planned, some may also be impossible to avoid. Sean Marshall, NTD News. Getting your children to eat healthy can be a chore, but throwing Thanksgiving with new foods and distractions at the table, you may find yourself being in a real challenge. Here's a couple of quick and easy tips to survive the holidays with picky eaters. It's that time of year again, and the Thanksgiving meal that's yummy to you may mean new, different looking foods on your picky eater's plate. It is a new routine, there's new people, there's new environments. So what we expect on a normal day and normal eating is typically not going to happen. Licensed dietitian Catherine Sherry with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta Strong for Life says the first tip to surviving the holidays is by being okay with things being different. Next, have some familiar food. If you're not hosting, bring it with you. It's always going to help if your child has some sort of normalcy happening during a hectic day. If you're heading to another home for Thanksgiving, Sherry recommends letting your child eat beforehand. Let them eat in their own comfortable spot, and then when you go somewhere, it's okay if they don't eat. Finally, Sherry says there's a time and place to introduce new foods, but Thanksgiving may not be it. She says holidays can be overstimulating for children, so don't force them to eat something new. It is always up to your child, whether it's a holiday or not, for them to decide if they're going to eat, what they're going to eat, and how much they're going to eat. For hosting Carrie. Yes. And thank you so much for watching today. That's all we have. Happy Thanksgiving.